Hello, I'm Camellia and today my teammates Stephanie, Faisal, Sakina, Diva and myself are going to share more about a case control study on vaginal microbiome in early pregnancy and subsequent risk of spontaneous preterm birth. Every year, about 15 million babies are born preterm. Preterm birth is defined as delivery before 37 completed weeks of pregnancy. This can be classified as preterm, which is less than 34 weeks, late preterm, around 34 to 36 weeks, and term births, which is 37 weeks or more. Spontaneous preterm births can be caused by many factors, including problems with the uterus or placenta, and underlying chronic conditions like high blood pressure or diabetes. The increased risk of preterm birth, especially early in pregnancy, has been associated with a state of altered vaginal microbiome called bacterial vaginosis or BV. BV is a condition that happens when there is too much of a certain bacteria which disrupts the normal balance of bacteria in the vagina. In previous studies, the association between vaginal microbiome and the risk of preterm birth has been controversial between different populations. In the US cohorts, higher risk of preterm birth is related to lower abundance of lactobacillus and higher abundance of other species like Uroplasma. In U the UK cohort, some lactobacillus species pose a risk factor, while others are protective against preterm birth. Hence, it is important to explore differences in the vaginal microbiome between preterm and term deliveries. The objective of this study, focusing mainly on the European population, was to compare the vaginal bacterial community and identify any BV-associated bacteria related to early, late spontaneous preterm and term deliveries. So the study used a special type of case control study called a nested case control. This is different from the usual case control study. In nested case controls, we start off with a defined cohort which is followed over time. Some people in the cohort may develop the disease condition, while others don't. From here, we select our cases from those who developed the conditions and controls from those who didn't develop the condition. Thus, it is called a nested case control because it is nested in a cohort study. Basically, a cohort of 2,366 pregnant women during their first trimester was selected and vaginal swabs were collected from them. From this cohort, 120 cases were preterm births and from the remaining women, controls were selected. Lastly, after some exclusion criteria, the experimentation were conducted based on 94 cases and 356 controls. So what did they do with the vaginal swabs? Firstly, they calculated the Nugent score, which is used to diagnose bacterial vaginosis. This is the state of altered vaginal microbiome associated with increased risk of preterm birth. They also did 16S sequencing, and from there, they conducted statistical analysis and clustering of bacterial communities into community state types. The authors found that there were no significant differences for the demographic and clinical characteristics of the study population. The characteristics in question can be seen on the lower half of the slides. When the relative abundance of vaginal microbiome community compositions were put against the Nugent scores assigned, the authors found that there was no significant correlation observed. Additionally, the microbial diversity based on the Shannon Diversity Index SDI, also found to be not different between the different Nugent score categories. Both of these findings were based on statistical tests that generated a p-value of more than 0.05 as shown in the red boxes. Looking at the vaginal microbial community composition, the authors had made comparisons of the relative abundance of the microbes presented as oligotypes for early and late preterm versus term deliveries. They found that L. gasseri L. johnsoni, L. crispatus, L. acidophilus, L. inus, L. R. solanaserum, B. longum, and B. brief were associated with a decreased risk of early spontaneous preterm birth, but not late spontaneous preterm birth. Out of all of this, the only difference in vaginal microbial taxonomy relative abundance composition among the preterm and term births was bifidobacterium, which as the above was found to be associated with decreased risk of early preterm but not late preterm birth. A heat map based on the 25 most abundant oligotypes was generated and based on this, six community state types were identified through clustering on the basis of similar microbial, phylotype and abundance. The SDI for the CSDs differed significantly, with CSD4 being significantly more diverse in comparison to the others. The authors found that CSD4 has a significantly higher frequency than CSD6 for early spontaneous preterm birth. 
associating it with an increased risk of early spontaneous preterm birth in comparison to CST6. A disclaimer though, referencing to CST6 was not explained in the paper. With these results, the authors interpret them as such. Firstly, the authors determined there was a lack of association between the Nugan score and the vaginal microbiome composition. It was surprising but not unexpected since it was previously reported in other studies. They attributed it to the possible different methods of gram staining which affected the Nugan score as well as the low abundance of bacteria that were found in the samples. As mentioned previously, there is a higher risk of early preterm birth when there is a high presence of Gardnerella as seen in CAST4 when compared to CAST6 which is low in diversity and contains non-dominant lactobacilli. The authors noted that similar studies show inconsistent results. However, they account this due to the discrepancy in the sample testing between the two studies. CST4 also has a 4.2 times higher association with the risk of early spontaneous preterm birth when compared to CST6. The SDI is notably higher in CST4 across all the other CSTs too, which is associated with early but not late preterm birth. The authors observed that L. crispatus may play a protective role during early gestation period, whereby bacteria decreases the risk of spontaneous early and late preterm birth. This is also supported by previous studies that were conducted. On the other hand, L. anus was found to have a direct association to the risk of preterm birth based on previous studies done. However, for this study, the authors found that the relationship between these two is inverse rather than direct instead. This can be seen from the low operational taxonomical units that for this bacteria compared to other significant units. Also, this association was only found to be specific to women with early preterm spontaneous birth, which is less than 34 weeks. In regards to the bifidiobacterium, there was previous meta-analysis had not observed any association with it between for pregnancy. However, there is observed to be a protective association in this study but further research needs to be done. Let's talk about the strengths of this study. Firstly, this study has a relatively large sample size compared to other similar case control studies which increases the reliability and power for detection of differences. Secondly, there are no known significant differences between the control and case group allowing for valid comparison among the groups. Thirdly, the selection to use the V4 variable region of the 16S rRNA gene provides strong discrimination between most bacterial species. Lastly, the authors compared their study to either similar studies which reported results consistent to theirs. In addition, the authors also acknowledged that the results from this study were inconsistent with other studies and provided reasons for the discrepancies. However, every study has its limitations. Firstly, majority of the participants in this study were white Europeans, which lacks representation of other ethnic groups. Secondly, the use of probiotics, antibiotics and hormonal drugs were not considered, and this could be potential confounders. Thirdly, the use of vivo region or 16S rRNA gene may not be comparable to other studies using other variable regions. Lastly, as this is a case control study, it can only tell us the association between certain CSTs and the risk of preterm delivery, not causations. This task leads us on to the future works. The authors can consider exploring associations between vaginal microbiome across pregnancy and the risk of spontaneous preterm birth. This allows for the comparison of vaginal microbiome within an individual, which reduces inter-individual variability and accounts for host immunity. Secondly, the impact on the association between vaginal microbiome and preterm birth by the usage of probiotics and antibiotics should be explored and accounted for. Lastly, study on how microbial-host interactions have led to the observed associations can also be done. In conclusion, factors that lower the risk of early but not late spontaneous preterm birth include some bacterial species like L. gesseri and B. longa, and vaginal CST with low diversity and non-dominance of lactobacillus species. Further studies on the association between the vaginal microbiome across pregnancy and risk of spontaneous preterm birth are also recommended while considering the immunology of the host. We have now come to the end of our presentation. Thank, Thank you! you.